uh, will be talking about his topic. Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank uh, Anwar and organizers of this event <coughs> for this, uh, for giving me chance to make a speech here. It's a great honor, and uh, I'm also glad to see so many uh, young people here uh, want to learn about engineering. They are studying engineering, and they want to learn more. And it's uh, it's make me uh, proud of these people. Uh, and today I will talk about uh, Flutter. My name is Raj Asanov. I am currently working as software developer in Other Cell, uh, and I'm also co-founder of company Remote Grub. Uh, and today I want to talk about Flutter. Uh, it's a new technology, and I thought it will be very interesting for many of you. Uh, first of all, uh, I will I want to give you a small. Uh, introduction to history of mobile development, where it started. Uh, first generation of mobile apps were designed by manufacturers. Uh, you all know this uh, old phones, which is very big and uh, not so comfortable to use. Uh, they had their own software, and uh, they developed their software for these devices. Uh, but mostly, uh, as these uh, systems, their devices, handsets was, was closed, their systems was closed. Uh, mostly the manufacturers of these handsets, devices, was responsible for uh, creating software for these products. Uh, but then customers uh, pushed the manufacturers to develop more and more features for these devices. Uh, firstly, there was just utility functions or some games, but uh, customers needed more. And that's when uh, manufacturers create, started creating some uh, SDK, software development kits, some frameworks, uh, to make it easy for other developers or for community uh, to create these uh, amazing products for these handsets. Uh, one of the first ones, uh, one of the most popular ones at that time was the operating system Symbian, mostly uh, used by uh, Nokia. Uh, you are maybe familiar with this. Uh, this software, uh, this platform was very popular at that time. Uh, in 2009, there was 250 million devices running on Symbian. Uh, and of course, it's mostly used by uh, Nokia. And it had its own store called Overstore. Uh, customers just can download this software from different developers, different companies, and it made uh, life a little bit easier for users. And of course, there is Android, uh, which is currently 75% of all devices in the world. All smartphones in the world are based on Android. Uh, its programming language is Java, and now it's officially support Kotlin, so it's now uh, the official language of this uh, operating system is Kotlin. And uh, 2008, uh, went online their first store called Android Market, and now it's Play Store. Uh, and of course, there is another solution, it's iOS. It's now 23% of all uh, iPhones, all devices uh, running on iOS. It's mostly iPads, iPhones, and these uh, devices from company Apple. Uh, there is a programming language is Swift or Objective-C, and they also had their own store uh, published in 2008 called App Store. Uh, let's see some statistics. Uh, one in five people in the world has a smartphone. I think everybody in this room has a smartphone and this count is uh, currently increasing. And 85% of users prefer mobile devices. So statistics show that um, people mostly use mobile phones or mobile devices, smartphones for uh, for every uh, day's needs, uh, they, use, they, are, they are using less and less desktop applications or desktop anymore. And the average time spent on mobile devices are now much, much more than on web. Uh, also, also uh, now there is 2.1 million apps in Play Store. At, uh, at one point, it was 3.6 uh, after cleanup and after uh, some removing of some harming applications. Now its point is 2.1 million, and in App Store it's 2 million. 
and it uh, shows uh, how people need these applications, how people use, and with demand, there is an, a lot of such solutions. Uh, let's talk about current situation about mobile development. Uh, there is multiple approach to develop uh, mobile applications, and one of these is uh, hybrid applications. Hybrid applications uh, are, uh, for example, there is frameworks called React Native, Native Script, or Cordova, and other, which uh, help to develop such platforms. Uh, they uh, has its pros and cons. Pros is that it's mostly uh, web-based. Uh, they uh, develop the products. You can know just uh, basic web skills, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you can develop uh, mobile pl uh, for mobile plot platforms. Uh, but it also has its disadvantages uh, as they are using uh, web-based uh, systems for their mobile devices. They are, uh, there is proxies and bridges between your code, your application, and the system. So they are using system proxies, and then they reach the core functionality or core processors of the devices, and this creates some uh, performance limitations. Uh, there is another solution, it's native. It's just creating uh, applications or writing software for exactly these uh, smartphones. For example, for Android, you develop uh, in uh, Java or Kotlin, and you write uh, specifically calling APIs of the creators of Android, and these applications uh, make um, great performance because you are basically running the code natively. Also, an IS, you write the code natively. It's a great solution for most companies. They are using it, but uh, it has also its problems or disadvantages. Uh, one of them is double work. For example, in a company, when you want to develop a, a product, uh, you decide, OK, I want to target the iOS and Android platforms, and you think uh, you, should, you, should need, you need two uh, team of developers one for Android, for I then for iOS, to uh, develop and to be in the market in the right time. But most of the time, it's costly because developers, you need to pay them salary. And uh, to, to manage two teams of developers, it's very hard. And most of the time, they hire developers which uh, do both. And of course, uh, a developer cannot do two things at the same time. They develop first, for example, Android, publish it, and after for, uh, developing the second approach, uh, they develop uh, for iOS. Uh, and it uh, makes a lot of problems for the companies. Uh, they're developing as they are late for their deadlines, and it's hard to maintain both platforms when, for example, you develop new feature for a phone, uh, you should develop in one platform and then another. Uh, let's talk about Flutter. Flutter is a new approach, new solution uh, for mobile development. Uh, it's uh, it's multi-platform SDK, so it means you develop for both platforms at the same time. You write one code, it runs on Android and iOS at the same time without any tweaks, without any changes. It works natively, so performance is like native. I say like native because there is a small proxy, but it's not visible because uh, Flutter actually using uh, engine, graphic engine called Skia, and this engine uh, written native code. So basically this engine helps to uh, draw pixels in the screen. And Flutter is uh, just creating uh, solutions, creating platforms for this engine, uh, but the iOS and Android smartphones just give the canvas to draw these pixels. And that's why code uh, pixel by pixel right designs are in iOS and Android uh, with high performance. Uh, one of the also great uh, points of Flutter is right is that it's uh, it's written, supported, and created by Google. This means uh, this means a lot for uh, companies like, for example, other cell. We are currently thinking about products that we can uh, support because uh, when there is some uh, products or software development teams that are created by small teams or small community, 
there's a chance that uh, they will uh, no longer support this, and it's very bad for a company's reputation because their applications need to be supported for years and years. And as this is uh, created by Google, uh, it's a great chance that uh, they are currently supporting it and they will support it in the near future. Uh, of course, uh, it has a fast learning curve. It's because of a lang uh, language called Dart. They are using Dart language for uh, development of these applications. Uh, Dart language is very easy language, so if you are under developer or uh, iOS developer and you have used an, uh, Java or Swift for development, uh, Dart will be very similar for you, similar for you. And JavaScript uh, language for web developers uh, will also, it will be familiar for you also because it's also uh, like uh, the language syntax in JavaScript and Dart are practically the same. Uh, it's also open source, which means it's absolutely free and uh, the code is free online. You can just Google it, download it, uh, create your own code. You can actually uh, look at the code of the developers and you can change it or modify it and create your own widgets. Uh, Flutter also has its own widgets. Uh, actually, Flutter plat platform comes with built-in widgets uh, for material and iOS devices. Uh, so it's called material widgets and Cupertino widgets. Uh, they are basically uh, replicating the design of um, native applications for material design uh, Android for Cupertino for iOS devices. You can use both. You can use material design uh, on iOS or Cupertino on Android. It doesn't matter because the uh, underlying engine for graphic design is the same. Uh, it gives great opportunities, for example, um, as it's native, uh, it, you can use native approaches, for example, face ID, uh, finger scan, location-based services, or camera usage, notifications, you can use all of them. But uh, as it's approach not completely native, uh, for uh, multiple devices, you should use plugins. Uh, Flutter is written in Dart, and it has its uh, repository for packages. A developer from Flutter team also creating great uh, packages and also community creating uh, libraries for these applications. And for example, if you want to use Face ID, Android has no Face ID. Uh, you can just download one library which will support both for Android and for iOS uh, the same technology. Uh, and there is also a great opportunity uh, coming uh, it's called Hummingbird. It's a new project of Flutter team. It's, uh, it's currently not in uh, even beta. It's, it's in development mode, but they also showed uh, great opportunities of this uh, new framework. It's uh, Flutter on web and desktop. So basically, for now, you are writing for, uh, applications for mobile and dev with the same code base. Uh, with no hustle, so er er everything is easy, and now you can just port this uh, application to web and desktop. So it's great opportunity for developers because they uh, can learn one language and write in multiple platforms. And this is also great for companies because because they can hire uh, developers who know one language and uh, and they can create one product and it will also serve for other platforms. For example, for now we are creating application, we have written in website, uh, we have made web development for months, uh, and now we should make this uh, the same approach for mobile development, and we should create everything from start uh, to mobile, devo mobile development. Uh, there is a uh, show showcase for this is that there is many companies uh, which are currently using, despite the fact that uh, Flutter is very young right now, but uh, there is also many companies which are using this. One of them is Alibaba, which is China's biggest market company. Uh, they, are, uh, the, they are created their own application written in Flutter, which has more than 50 millions of downloads today, and every day millions of millions of users use the, uh, these applications written in Flutter uh, in their devices. 
Also, uh, there's a Google Ads application, which are used by anybody who uses mobile application of Google. Uh, and there is not so popular in Azerbaijan applications called Apple Tree, Reflectly, Hamilton Musical, and the list is growing on. Uh, we are currently also in other field developing an application written in Flutter. Uh, soon it will be published and it will be one of the first applications in Azerbaijan written in Flutter. And I hope uh, this list ca will continue to go on because uh, such platforms make it easy for developers to use. And, uh, and I want to encourage you to use this platform because it will make you uh, productive in your development. If you want some prototyping something, creating some great application, it will help you uh, easily to be on, uh, in the first places who created this application. Uh, thank you.